Hello guys, welcome back to the channel. Welcome back to episode two on the DB11. It feels so good to say that. I'll say it again. Episode two on this 2017, I made a mistake in the last episode, 2017 DB11 V12 and not V5. Um, it's not been a good start to the morning. We came in, we got the car in after the last episode. We were waiting for parts. I've got an update on that. Um, but anyway, it came in and the car was just completely dead. I thought it was the battery. We changed the battery in the key. Um, still flat. Have you ever had a DB11 with a flat battery? Let me show you what you have to do. Come. Since the battery died, we couldn't open the bonnet. There's an actuating button to open the bonnet. It didn't work. And then there's two emergency cables to pull. And for some reason, they're jammed up. So I don't know. It was opening a few days ago, no problems. Since the battery went flat, it's not opening. There's jump points underneath the bonnet, you can't access that. So in the back seat, have a look at this. So look down there, you have to remove this carpet. There's two screws for the back seat, like the build quality is really good, but it's just a pain when you have to access these things. And I didn't know this, but if anyone is ever watching this in the future, DB11 battery is behind the driver's seats in the rear. You have to pull this back, there are two screws there, and then we can access that. We were able to jump the car from this point, and now the car is starting. However, we can't open the bonnet. If anyone knows how to open this bonnet, do get in touch. I wanna give a massive shout out to one of my subscribers who told me to get in touch with Silver Lake. This is not sponsored, but Silver Lake, I've been in touch with them and I've got quite a lot of bits that I needed for the car. Um, so we're gonna be sorting all of that. But this episode is all about the rear subframe. I showed you in the last episode, the subframe for this car on the rear is 5K, five grand. And in this episode, I'm gonna try to save over 4K. So I've got a guy coming down from Precision Welding Solutions over in Essex. He's a professional TIG welder. He deals with this sort of stuff. He's gonna be coming down and we're hopefully gonna be fabricating the two tabs that are broken off the rear subframe. We're gonna be hopefully getting that on and by the time we've done that, then you know we'll be setting up for that all important test fit of the new parts and if that goes to plan, we can get the car driving, etc., etc. But if you wanna see how we get on with that, don't forget, subscribe to the channel to follow the build. But for today, we're gonna to get the car from here, next door, onto the ramp. We're gonna to start to tear down. I wanna see exactly what's going on there and we're gonna make some prep for when the welder gets here. And hopefully it all works out. We're gonna have some good news and we can get this rear subframe fixed. Can we fix the rear subframe? Find out in this episode, let go. A lot of you guys got in the comments last time and said that I was saying Ashton. Listen, I'm from Barbados, man, and I use, that's, that's my slang. Everything Ashton, Ashton, Ashton. But for everyone who was annoyed with me saying Ashton, there you go, it's an Aston Martin. I just wanted to clear that up. Let's get the Aston Martin <laughs> onto the ramp. Before we do, we're gonna get a cold start for the boys. Start her up, man. Oh, love that. What? Come on, do some work, man. Do tell it, guys, do some work. Come on. So guys, I went ahead and I removed the wheel arch lining. It's not good, like, literally. Broken wire here, broken wire there, broken brake line there. This is unplugged, that's unplugged. And we've got lots of damage. Like, look, I shouldn't be able to put my hands through, like so. I'm looking at everything else, and I want to show you um, the connectors for the bottom trailing arm seems to be fine. It's the actual trailing arm that's broken there. Trailing arm is broken there, and at the top, it's literally just got two square little tabs that have snapped off. So, 
Um, I've showed it to a lot of people and we should be able to fabricate something there and with a TIG welder, not your standard welding, but a TIG welder should be able to come in. And we're gonna reinforce it, or well, that is the plan. Reinforce it, reinforce it. It should be actually stronger than OEM. And hopefully, if it goes to plan, I will save myself 5K. Um, but for now, I wanna to continue to remove the broken plastics and just see exactly what's going on in this area. So let's go. <laughs> wow, massive, isn't it? Alright guys, so have a look, um, it's actually about an hour later just to remove this front bumper on an Aston Martin DB11 is hard work. The way it's connected to the body of the car, it's just really weird, like this one connects all the way deep into the boot, there's another connector right here that's really deep into the boot, and then this one is just really hidden, but anyway, long story short, we got it off, and what I'm seeing is a little bit worrying, but I hope we can get it sorted, have a look at this rear trailing arm it's completely twisted have a look at that twisted to the point of snapping and that's gone um these are the ones that i showed you before these trailing arms have broken off completely as has this one but what i need to do is just continue to strip away here i'm just going to focus on this area and these are the two tabs now i stripped down the driver side as well and i'll show you why this side has got no damage, everything on this side is intact, have a look. And these are the two tabs. So I've gone ahead, I've measured them up, and we're going to be fabricating based off of this side. So once the welder comes down, he's a welder and fabricator for a company, like I said earlier, called Precision Welding Solutions over in Essex. We can use the measurements from these two tabs right here, get the measurements, and he's going to come with sheet metal of the same grade and of the same thickness, and then we can make up the template and copy it over to the two new tabs. Alright guys, so all those broken parts have been removed from the existing um, subframe. This is where we're gonna pause everything for now. We have to wait until the welder comes in. I'll pack away all of these bits, but have a look at this, it's quite interesting. When I was doing my research on this car and the history, one of the techniques that Aston Martin used was the engine is mounted a little bit further back in the front of the car. And have a look at this area here, there's nothing there. On my M140, BMWs, a lot of other cars that I've worked on, the gearbox will be in that area, but it looks like the gearbox is actually at the rear right here. Tell me if that is correct, am I right, am I wrong? But from what I can see, these are the gearbox oil cooling pipes, etc., etc. That's the gearbox pan. It looks like a typical ZF pan. Um, I'm not sure if it's a ZF gearbox. If you know, do let me know. But yeah, there's no gearbox up there and it looks like the gearbox is here. I don't know if this is a rare, I called it a rare diff, but I don't know if that's a rare diff or 
I'm assuming it is. I don't have a clue. Let me know what you think. Let me know if you know what this is. I know a lot of you guys are enthusiasts of Aston Martin. And shout out to, I've actually got one of the workers from the factory in Gaydon who reached out to me on Instagram. So thank you, mate. Um, if you do know, drop a comment down below and let me know how this whole situation is made up. But on a positive note, everything under there looks in order. Um, it's got some grazing on this under shield right here, but I'm not too worried about that. Have a look at that. Tiny bit of grazing there, tiny bit of grazing there. Obviously, when that wheel was ripped off, this would have just skidded along the ground a little bit and it's got some grazing, like I said. Not too worried about that. All right, you guys, so I've done quite a lot of work. I'm happy with where we've gotten to thus far, but I can't do anything else. I'm gonna continue once my welder and fabricator gets here and hopefully we're gonna be able to fix it. So I'll see you in a bit. Because we've beveled the back out, we get a full penetration weld here, and then same the other side, frying that flush. So as you can see, the bolt slides through. Yeah. Two hours later. Oui. <laughs> Look, guys. Guys, I'm 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 a big boy. I'm not a small boy. Have a look at that. Solid as what? If this can take my weight, swinging around, messing about like that, I'm pretty sure it can take a training arm. Happy days. This repair has just saved me £4,000. A replacement subframe, as I showed you in the last episode, would have cost me £5,000, and this has just saved me four grand. Now, I'm expecting a lot of you guys to get in the comments to say that it's not gonna be good, it's not gonna be good, but he's reinforced it with plates of aluminium, both on the inside, at the top, and at the bottom, 
and we reckon that this is gonna be stronger than OEM. Another thing about this repair, I just wanna point out, if you imagine these two bottom pieces, there's a giant control arm that's gonna go there, and then that connects to the suspension strut. The majority of the load is going up there, nothing to do with this. The majority of the load is gonna go from this point here up to the suspension strut, and that's gonna carry the entire weight of the car. This trailing arm controls the camber, so there's not gonna be a lot of force asserted onto this particular joint. So, all we need to do now is wait for the parts to come in. They should be here shortly. Um, once they arrive in the post, in the next episode, I will be fitting it on, and hopefully we can get the car rolling, and it should be coming off the ramp on its all four wheels. So, stay tuned for that. So guys, this is where we're gonna wrap up this episode. I wanna give a massive thank you to the guys over at Precision Welding Solutions. They came down, they fabricated the parts, they welded it into place. That's the first time I've seen a TIG welder in action in person. I've seen it on TV, I've seen it on YouTube. That's the first time I've seen it in action. I am confident that this is super strong. I am confident that it's gonna be better than OEM and I am happy with the final product. But before I get too carried away, I'm gonna wait for the parts to come, line it all up, make sure that everything fits. Will it work? You have gotta stay tuned to find out. And to do that, you have to subscribe to the channel, make sure your bells are on, and continue to watch. If you enjoyed this episode, press the like button. But this is where we're gonna head off, so like I always say, keep it moving, and I'll see you in the next one. Guys, thank you for watching. Click here to see what YouTube thinks you should watch. Click here to watch one of my previous episodes. And like it said there, don't forget to like, comment, share, and subscribe. We out.